Why don't you just yell? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, the best kind of arguments are arguments like this way. You know, stuff happens and people suffer. And stuff will happen and people will suffer. And that's life. Um, the idea that life is riskier under capitalism. I mean, what we've exchanged in our modern society is we've exchanged growth and, and I think prosperity and a lot of things for a safety net, a vast safety net that keeps us all comfortably mediocre and, and, and doesn't challenge us to do any better. So I think, I, you know, so I think it's, it's yeah, capitalism is riskier. Um, capitalism, you, you rise and you fall faster, right? People change, people who are poor can become rich, people who are rich can become poor very quickly, relatively speaking. In the 19th century, it used to be said from, sh uh, from uh, short sleeves to short sleeves in, in two generations, right? First generation makes it, the second generation loses it. And then within one generation, often people made, lost, made, lost more than once because it was a real dynamic uh, capitalist. But, and there is no example. I mean, I, I don't know of any, really don't know of any. There's no planned, managed economy in the world, all, in all of human history that's been successful, and there's no free market where property rights were properly protected that has been a failure. It just hasn't happened. I mean, to me, it's like the law of gravity. It, it just is, right? It just is. Now, granted, a different species might have different system, but we as a species, the way we are designed with reason requiring what is the enemy of reason? What's the thing that, that, that constrains one's ability to think? Ideology. No, ideology is a framework for reasoning. It might be good, it might be bad. But what really stops thinking? In what sense? Do you think over time? You don't have enough time. Oh, you don't have enough time. Yeah, well, yes. But what would, what would make the time so narrow? What really, if I put a gun to the back of your head, you can't think. There's no point in thinking. You have to do what I tell you. It's you follow my orders or else I pull the trigger. And in order to live, you stop thinking. You can't think. And that's true of all authority, right? If, if you're living in the 15th century and you want to do science, you can't. <laughs> you can't think about science because the consequence of any science is burning at the stake. Or if you're lucky, house arrest in Galileo's case. So there's an authority with a gun placed at the back of your head so you don't think. To, to have progress, to have success, what we need is to remove the gun and let reason flourish. So as long as reason is the tool by which we know the world, then we have to have freedom. There's just no alternative. Yeah, you want to follow up? Sure, I mean, this is voodoo economics at best. I don't know, I, you know, it's complete nonsense. What drives an economy? What drives an economy? What resulted in the spike up, right? More consumers? I mean, is there any ever a problem if you had money in your pocket to get you to consume? Consumption is easy. Consumption is never the problem. What happened that drove wealth that way? Production. The, the primary in economics is the producer. It's the entrepreneur, it's the businessman, it's making and building stuff. How do you consume? One, you have to work first. Or somebody has to work so that we can steal his money and give it to you. But somebody has to create the values for you to consume. And then what are you consuming? Stuff that somebody made. So on both sides of the transactions is stuff. That production, consumption is the minor part of the economy. This, this idea that consumption is 70% of the economy is bizarre. Yes, I understand the math that they get to that, but it's not real. 
It's not what's actually so. So let's take from this group and give to this group and encourage them to consume. How does that work? How does that increase? How does that make us better off? This is stimulus packages, right? We take from this group, give to. It's, it's all nonsense. The core, if you want economic growth, is to encourage entrepreneurship and business investment. Consumption f always follows. Consumption is never a problem. You get money in my pocket, I'm out there buying stuff. Right? But how do I get money in my pocket? By producing something, by creating something and selling it, trading. So I have to cons produce in order to consume. It's a, it's a, it's, in my view, it's a huge mistake to put the consumer as primary in economics. It's the producer who's the primary in economics. You know, did I know I wanted an iPhone before I got one? People talk about job satisfied consumer demand. There was no consumer demand for the iPhone. Zero. I challenge you to find somebody who even imagined that this existed, could exist, and would want it if it existed. No. Once Steve Jobs made it and showed it to me, I went, whoa, I want one of those. But first he had to make it and show it to me. So if you want to get economic growth going, you have to support the producer. It's not about the consumer. And just printing money and handing it to people, that's not real. Right? That is, prices will rise and nothing will happen. You haven't created anything. You've printed pieces of paper. That's not wealth. Wealth is not pieces of paper. By the way, if anybody has an objection to capitalism, I'm eager to hear it.